are these people? It's a popular resistance article that came from Labor Notes. All right. And so My popular resistance. You you I've I've been watching in the trailer park for a long time and you have done a lot of uh, uh manual labor jobs over the years and worked in a lot of difficult conditions, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent. I was a single mother at the age of 18. I raised three kids on my own. I took any job and every job that I could get. So yeah, I could attest to this for sure. Right. So here's what, like literally we're down to how workers are winning fans, air conditioning, and even heat pay. That's the new one that I was like, Ooh, good. that's interesting. Yeah. Good is right. Um, well, can I tell you my daughter works for the dollar tree. Right. She's right. a manager, like a low level manager, maybe assistant manager or something. And the last summer it got so hot multiple times and they refused to put air conditioning in that store that they've had to shut the store down. So for like a week, the only dollar store in our town was shut down because of the heat. Not to mention the amount of merchandise I'm sure they lost because I've managed multiple convenience stores in my life. And when it gets that hot, it, all the chocolate, everything melts, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I totally, my, my poor daughter, you know, having to work in those type of conditions, just pouring sweat because she stocks all night, you know. Right. So, yes, I, I know about this. And, and it's been something that is affecting us at the bottom <laughs> for sure, you know. Hmm. Yeah. So it says here, if you're, if you're dreading summer uh, on the job this year, you're not alone. Every month last summer was, of course, we know the worst, the most scorching on world record. Trapped under heat domes, dozens of metro areas busted their longest streaks of of longest streaks ever of highs over a hundred. Oh, all right. Even Climate Reef was change. saying where even see, Reef was saying where he's at. It's a hundred three the the heat index right now. Phoenix wow. afternoons were over a hundred ten for a month straight. Oh my God. On asphalt yards, nearly not uh, nearly hot enough to melt, and in some cases they are melting. Bonus hungry managers forced workers to keep up the usual pace. And of course, we know now that the results were lethal. Wow. Um, yeah, it's lethal. Right. In 2022, right. 2022 is the last year that we have data. 43 U.S. workers lost their lives to heat on the job officially. That's up from 36. Officially. Right, officially. <laughs> That's up from 36 in 2021. And we can expect this cruel number to keep climbing. Well, we know because Texas for a while you know, uh, got rid of water for workers outside for construction workers. And here's another one from warehouses to coffee houses, to construction sites, workers using solidarity and creative action, even without the protection of a union contract, have won shop floor fights to keep their coworkers safe and cool. Like you said, your, your daughter's dollar general, they, uh, they don't have a union, correct? No, hell no. Hell no. Dollar right. tree. They're not unionized. No. Right. So the first one they talk about is this Amazon San Bernardino Air Hub, which is one of the largest in the country. They, you've got Philadelphia, you've got a couple, but San Bernardino is uh, famous. They're outside of L.A., right? right? Outdoor workers on the tarmac had it worst. But even when an indoor worker was taken away in an ambulance last year, that was the final straw. All right. They had an on-site medical department who pr tried to just say that he had the lingering effects of COVID. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. They always blame it on something else. Exactly. Right. But... It wasn't good enough for Pashawn Brown, who literally was administering COVID tests, but she didn't die of COVID because they won't pay her family and they won't take care of her or even acknowledge that she died due to working in an Amazon facility. Gross. All right. And that happened in 2020 or 20 at the end of 2020. Um, right. Colin. I had dinner with the um, one of the directors of the Amazon warehouse in Seattle right around that time. Mm -hmm. And he was shocked that I was bringing it up. Like, what do you mean? We have a great safety record at Amazon. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh, goodness. Uh, Reef saying safe and effective, safe and effective. That's right. My heart swells with pride. That's right. Um, <laughs> right. So paramedics told him it was heat stroke. That really kicked us off. And they started organizing. Right. Anna Ortega. Uh, it's 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 always the Latina women that start organizing it. It was Michelle Valentin Nieves along with Christian Smalls that did it in, in at JFK Eight. I, I God bless you, seriously. God bless the those women for organizing and and for saying enough is enough. All right, um, workers were starting an organizing drive as Inland Empire Amazon Workers United with support from the Teamsters. Grr. 
Those Teamsters, man, they find Those themselves teamsters. everywhere. Where Look, they've had a three-year plan to go after Amazon. I don't know if you saw, I was on Hardlands this week uh, a talking with Kit. I wrote an article a little after, I raged here last week about the deal, that Amazon Labor Union decided to make a deal with the Teamsters. And this is not what this is about, but uh, just on, on a tangent. And, right. uh, and I got real upset about that because it's a cop out in a lot of ways. Now I found out some more data this week that Amazon labor union was basically broke and that they had also their last filing with the NLRB claimed that they had zero members. Now I don't know if that means they had zero paying members, but yeah, they just had a vote of everybody in the warehouse who voted if they had zero members of Amazon labor union for new leadership. Or, or to to do to make the deal with the Teamsters to align with them. Amazon be shady with the Teamsters? No way. It's so weird. All right, and then there's there's weird stuff to, with Chris Smalls going back to 2022. We saw him right. aligning with the Teamsters. We called him out. We wrote yep. an article. We tried to yep. get him. Anyway, check that out. I was on Hardlands. I was raging for 45 minutes. You can watch last week's segment about that. But I'll have to check it out. Yeah, uh, and and anyone that hasn't yet in in the chat for sure. But a lot of you guys I know were here. Um, but anyway. Uh, team sirs, before the day of the ambulance, we had already made our own health and safety committee. Again, the organizing people in the warehouses because they weren't waiting for the bosses to do it because they never were going to. And they'd been meeting weekly or biweekly and talking about what was going on in the, in the facility and what are they experiencing and what are the bosses saying to them? They realized that the bosses weren't following their own safety rules, like allowing no short way. breaks, right? Uh-huh. Right. If they felt oh early symptoms of heat stroke, like these guys just don't care. Right. A lot of times no, they don't care. Well, and then here's the excuse. Well, management announces these changes just once and doesn't keep track of who they need to get the information to. So maybe the bosses don't even know. Yeah, they know. I'm sorry. They do know. Right. But half, after the indoor worker collapsed, the committee realized that enough people were ready to act. We handed out flyers to co-workers on breaks. We marched on the boss with over 20 people. And it was after that they finally installed. They marched on the boss. Fans. They got fans. But they wanted more than fans, and they should. They wanted those safety breaks. They they kept They up. got pizza, too. Man. Can, how about a pizza party? That's that's our big story. <laughs> you got some fans thing. in a pizza party. Shut up. What are you crying about? Right. Um, they, they kept the break room conversations and public flyering. They put in a complaint to the state job safety board, which sent in, uh, safety inspectors and, uh, and eventually cited the company for unsafe heat exposure. Go figure. And they find them like $200 a day or whatever, some stupid yeah. low number, which Amazon's happy to pay to keep the, the lights on and, and the things moving, right? We want breaks and cold drinks. Yay. Our annual training got updated to say if we are feeling symptoms of heat, we have the right to take a five minute break. Five minutes. Five oh, minutes. That's something we go, wow, you can fan yourself for five minutes and cool yourself down to the point that you can get heat stroke again five minutes later. Um, that's something they pushed forward for, right? They probably wanted 15 and settled on five. Should ask for 30. Right. right? Yeah. It, it showed that we could really win. <laughs> oh, God. That they could have done it from the beginning. And they didn't have to wait this until something terrible. terrible happened, which is true. Right? This, this is terrible, yeah. And here's another one. The electrical workers want contracts that require their bosses on construction sites to supply cool water all day. But the electrical workers aren't basically putting up with this shit. And one basically said, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not going to work until there's water. And guess what? The foreman folded and left to go get some. <laughs> Amazing how that works if you stand up for yourself. That that's one kind of shocks me because, I mean, that's a simple, <laughs> basic thing that I know has been on job sites, you know. That one shocks me. Why would the hell would they not have? We've all seen those construction water barrels, you know. They always have them. So that one kind of, that one shocks me. For the, uh, the electrical workers to yeah. not have that standard. My mom was a flagger and she worked with, uh, you know, she was IBW. And so that's shocking to me. They always had a water thing on the back of one of their trucks. Now you're in Western Washington, right? Yep. Yeah. So this is. I am. I'm so far north that I can see Canada on a clear day. So I'm up there on the pe the peninsula, the point of the end of the United States. That's where I am. Oh wow, that's awesome. That's real. It's beautiful up there. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous here. Yeah. I saw. I saw some of your Facebook pictures yesterday, and damn, that was 
Gorgeous. Um, I'm so lucky. I know. I, I take it for granted. We live where the mountain meets the sea. So I got mountains. I've got rivers. I've got, you know, the sea. It's, yeah, I get everything. But yeah, at a Starbucks in Prosser, Eastern Washington, right? Overheating became the spark for a union drive. So they actually ended up unionizing. Yep. Managers claimed the AC would fit was fixed, but we put a fridge on a thermostat on the counter and it's reading over 80. Oh, that shit. was it. That was in March, not even in the height of summer. And it was hotter Prosser's inside, warm, right? It was hotter inside than it was outside because <clears throat> yeah. they have 500 degree ovens, water boilers going all the time, fridges yeah. giving out heat. It goes up exponentially. So yeah, here's their partners. Their, their Starbucks partners were hesitant to come out in open conflict with management, especially in Washington state. That's the home of Starbucks. Like you don't screw yes. with Starbucks in Washington state. All right. No, I just stayed in downtown Seattle a couple of months ago, and I literally, my hotel was right next to the Bezos Ball, you know, the big sphere, so huh. I could literally walk out on the balcony and see it. Uh, balls. Yeah. Uh -huh. But from what we understand, he's packing up and leaving because, you know, it's not well enough that he owns all of our politicians, but when the individual cities and the city council started pushing back against him, he was just kind of like, you know, I'm going to get the hell out of here. So who knows where he's going to end up? Well, he's going to Florida. He built a massive mansion. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was Florida. There's, yeah. no state, there's no state income tax, which saves him a fucking right. shitload of money every well, year. Well, we don't have state income either here oh, in no? Washington State. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Well, and then it's probably which means we pay the highest tax rate in the country yeah. and the poorest in Washington state actually pay the highest tax rate in Washington state up to 17%. Like it's insane. Wow. Wait, sales tax is 17%. That oh is, no, it's higher oh. than that. It can go higher than that. It just it depends on what County you're in, but uh, we pay tax on everything in Washington state because we don't have a state income tax. So, I mean, gas and, and sin tax on cigarettes and stuff like that, it's, it's insane. We've this always is, paid much higher prices than everybody else. This is allegedly what Trump is, you know, you've been hearing people on Instagram talk about what Trump wants to do, is either eliminate income tax and go with sales tax and with usage taxes on basically everything, tariffs. Um, right. And that's a, little, that's a little frightening, either lower it or eliminate it entirely. So... That's, that, that's good for corporations. Well, the Fed can print as much money as they want, so I'm with them on do away with the income tax. But no, charging me for that stuff, I don't think so. You can turn around. Like, you can go the other way. Well, on top of the it's fact Trump. that... It's Trump. It, yeah, it's like they, they collect $3 trillion in taxes, but, you know, a, a lot of that income tax is... Ba it's not... A, they, they don't collect... They couldn't collect enough in sales taxes to make up for the income tax that they would be giving up. Oh, no. but, but yeah, what was going sure. on here? You know, you, you had the wildfires and smoke last year, I'm guessing. That was last August, right? We were all choking. Oh, we've had about a couple of years, yeah. Choking, wearing masks, and suffocating as we worked. So as I uh, so I talked to other partners, and we decided we couldn't work. And then a callous store manager, always an asshole manager that strikes that final <laughs> blow, right? It's always an asshole, right? So... When she came in to respond to workers' requests to close at least half the shop, her first thing was to call out one of our partners for wearing something off code. Did you not wear enough flair today, sweetheart? Holy shit. That's when we started walking out. And there was nothing she could do, spur of the moment. And they all worked out. They all, look, nobody got a write-up because what are they going to do? They can't, they can't shoot us all. And that's the power in numbers and the power in solidarity. Right, right. Right. So they won union authorization election the following month. And the manager finally, guess what? Hauled in the fans. Now, homegrown, that might have been that. You, have you heard of homegrown? Have you eaten at a shop named homegrown? I've never heard of it before. No, I've never heard of it either. All right. But this one is actually a pretty good story because they have cafes and caterers. And because of it, they have different workers at different levels uh, and that, that are doing basically similar work for different pay. And they all started to organize. People were going home after a long day of heat. You're exhausted, right? Uh, they did a march on the boss. They were flyering customers outside the store on breaks nice. in front of the managers. Pretty badass. We did sidewalk chalking. That's what my kids like to do. I love that. I like to sidewalk chalk too. Right? We asked an industrial hygienist to come and check out our conditions, and they set up a medical station in front of the store to interview people. Awesome. Okay. And, and what happened? Pizza party, Gatorade, visors, cut fruit, and a few more breaks. 
But that's not enough. A pizza party. Right. So after a near unanimous strike vote in August, they shut down the stores with a series of one day strikes over heat. And I believe we might have even covered that last summer on how do we miss that a couple of summers ago. Um, but getting to that unanimous vote took time. And, and this was talking about how do they organize? It took a while to bring people in. You had intense conversations. You got high schoolers and college students working in the front. Then often immigrants, older folks and people with undocumented status in the back. And getting them all to get on the same page and agree to, to walk out on the boss? Like, that's not the easiest thing. And they had to basically be pushed. And they had to build enough trust among these groups to take a big risk together. And while heat was a unifying issue for the store workers, it turned out that the catering workers already had decent AC and fewer ovens in their production area. Well, okay, but still they wanted to join the strike. Right. And after the, After adding a demand to end a pay gap, and this was it. Figure out what do they need? Well, they don't like the fact that the catering drivers and the distribution drivers do similar work with different pay. So the student workers then came out of school to cheer them on. Just let's find issues that would like, and you don't have to ask for one thing. You can have a list of demands. You should have a list of demands. <laughs> too often yeah, no, they're going to do this. Too often the ask is not is is not enough. So I'm down with that, um, right? In the um, in the strikes, the the workers won mo the mo their most ambitious demand, which was discretion to close the stores if we had to to keep us safe if it got too hot or smoky. For That's what they time. always fucking say. That's what they did to my daughter. We'll just close the store to keep you safe. We're keeping you safe. They didn't care how much it inconvenienced the community to not have the dollar store open for five days, <laughs> right? Or the income from those. For the employees, because they're certainly not going to pay them to stay home to keep them safe. You don't get right. paid for not exactly. working. It's work without pay. You know, it's it's like punishment. I told my daughter to file unemployment. I was like, no, fuck that. If they're telling you you can't come to work for a week, you file unemployment. <laughs> like, Right. But that fall, homegrown okay. workers won, again, union recognition with Unite Here Local 8. So you have people that are working together, organizing, filing with the NLRB and winning their fight. And after a long contract battle and three months strike to reinstate a fired co-worker, they finally won their first union contract this March. Fuck yeah. And now the layoffs start. They haven't, they don't tell you about that until afterwards, but right. you and I know. Um, yeah. The contract locks in an innovative idea, which is heat pay. And I love this idea that after an hour above 82 degrees in the shop, they earn 150% wages for the rest of the shift. Above 86, it's double wages yeah. or the right to leave without punishment. Without punishment, like but also it. without pay. So you're sacrificing. But look, if you if it's that hot and you don't want to work there, you shouldn't have to risk your job to do this crap. I mean, it's fucking crazy. For a company that's still making billions. Now, Homegrown doesn't make billions. They're, they're I believe, a more local shop. But here, the point is to make management cave and give AC so they don't have to give double pay. And if they don't, they won the right to pick it, flyer, and even uh, even while they're under contract to take the fight to the public. So that's nice that they built it into the contract, right? Those might be the most important wins since these battles aren't going away. The company can get AC, but heat waves aren't gonna get, are going to get hotter and hotter. And wildfires are going to get worse. And this is going to be a workplace issue like forever. Um, yeah, it is. Right? Climate change. That's what they keep telling us. Climate change, climate change, climate change. They're screaming at the Democrats. They're campaigning on it. So why are they not getting behind legislation that would protect workers? Because they don't give two shits. Because they're in the pockets of the same corporations that don't want to put an AC unit in the dollar store. You know, like, it's the corporations. And this is my problem that, you, you know, I rant about this all the time. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time going back into late stage capitalism after I, I'm 50 years old. Um, I've been working since I was 15 years old. And where has it got me? I got ripped off for my 401k. I've, you know, I, I could I ever have bought? a house hell no like minimum wage hasn't rose since 2009 and uh you know instead every four years we got all excited about oh the democrats or the republicans when at the end of the day they're all the same they're owned by the corporations that screw you the workers over constantly and it you know from state to state some states have got it much worse you know i feel bad for the states in the south because 
they really they, they've got the heat and they you know have such low pay uh i would love to see workers come together and unite for heat pay because hey it's gonna get warmer yeah it's it, the heat is getting hotter out so you know i was actually gonna bring from uh from biloxi blues it was it was like it's africa hot like cause, it's africa cause hot, that's yeah. what's going on right now lately in, in i wish in this... it was hot it's oh. not hot where i am Oh, dude, it was it was it was in the '90s all weekend. We we spent the weekend. Oh, luckily, I love with the, it. I'm you know, a sun worshiper. I love the heat. So yeah, I'm we spent the weekend with so the kids culture. at the pool. We we it was just oh, that's, see that's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Family I time. brought the laptop and I'm sitting here and and tweeting and angry tweeting at people about Israel and watching kids blow it up with their fucking heads. <laughs> And oh, it's just wonderful. And and looking at my kids playing in the pool, you know, ha it's a very trying time. And I think I think you yeah. also are yeah. are experiencing this. Like you're a grandma. How like I enjoying am. your grandkids, knowing when seeing what we see all day and trying to put yeah. that aside and enjoy the stuff, knowing it's it's real hard. I gotta tell you. And I think it is. Uh, it, it, is. it is for a lot of people. Um, it, you know, we're we're far from alone in all this. But, um, you know, there's such a that, lack of empathy. You know, Americans are so propagandized; they just have no empathy um, at all. And and that's where it shocks me the most. Like, you have kids, you have grandkids. Can you imagine that being your eight year old grandchild with their head blown out? Like, I just where is the humanity? There's no fucking humanity left, and it's infuriating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and, and like you know, somebody said like I can't possibly pay attention to all the crap that, that that's happening and i think that that's kind of the plan of the elite it's shock and all like they're trying watch to my light... show i cover it all yeah, well yes watch the trailer park for sure you know in, in the afternoons and i certainly do uh and you know along with kit at, at hardlands in the morning and we stay informed and, and steve at am wake up you know we've yep. we've got a, a a network and a family of independent channels and not just inn you know, we're premiering and running stuff all day and clips from the shows that you might oh, have right. missed. Uh, again, RBN, Sabby, there's Fiorella and, and Pasta with his channel. And, and, and you know, Matt, Matt Wineglass is now popping up with the homeless left and starting to do more stuff with us. And yeah. excited to see to see what we you can know, potentially hot do spot. together. Hot spot does a great job of getting short clips out of, you know, what's going on. Yeah, yep. there's so many good ones. Nico and Hotspot. And yeah, I mean, or again, it's... So, so much great independent media. You know, let me first of all let me let me just go quickly. We did get a, an, a wonderful donation last last week from Kathy Lloyd, so she had to be added to the uh -huh. to the list. Woohoo! Thank you, Kathy. Love you. Um, these are all of our current and past supporters, and we're so grateful. If you do want to support financially, if not, we totally understand and just enjoy, share the content, and and hang out with chat. If you can, Cash App is do dollar sign Indie News Network. 